So DreamFit's been around for about 10 years now. Um, it actually started off by a chance meeting at a car park just over here. So it was nice coming here yesterday setting up um, to see where it all sort of started off again. Um, but we're all about helping people with disabilities fulfill their dreams um, through equipment kind of based solutions. Um, we've got a range of OTs and engineers and um, technicians on our team uh, and we do uh, equipment stuff ranging from helping people find off the shelf solutions through to finding off the shelf solutions then slightly modifying them to suit people right through to custom design and build from the, the ground up. Um, so I'm just going to run through some of the examples of some of the projects that we've done that are uh, potentially beneficial for people with spinal cord injuries. Um, we do lots and lots of projects. I think at the moment we've got over 200 projects that we're working on now for people with a whole wide range of uh, various disabilities. Um, so these are just some examples of either current projects or projects from uh, the past. And our work, um, for anyone that knows a bit about the history of DreamFit, everyone sort of knew us as the guys that were doing motorbikes for paraplegics. We've expanded a lot beyond just motorbikes. Um, we did do a lot of stuff like hovercrafts and speedboats and fun stuff like that, but we do things right down to daily living aids and mobility and you name it. We don't have a set range of products. We're a service. You tell us what you want to do and we'll help you out. Um, so I've just got a couple of categories of stuff I'm going to throw, go through. Um, wheelchair mods are um, one typical type of work that we do, ranging from mounting equipment onto the wheelchair, various accessories, whether it be canopies or mirrors or lights or sound systems or bull bars or whatever people want. <laughs> <laughs> and just some examples of that. Um, there's a guy, Connor, who's playing um, wheelchair soccer, so we fabricated a, a bull bar to sit on so he can go out there and, or similar to the, the electric version of uh, Murderball. Um, so we do the custom fabrication. We're doing a couple of hockey sticks now that mount onto a couple of those electric wheelchairs. Um, this is a sound system that we pimped out for a young 16 year old guy so he could listen to his heavy metal music <laughs> through his speakers and stuff on his new wheelchair. Um, this is a custom canopy we did for the guy Matt, um, which obviously you can pick which team he goes for. <laughs> Surprising how important colour is when we do a lot of our projects, because so, we're doing custom stuff, our clients get to pick. Um, but a few things we had to factor in here, like it had to be easily removable for his carers, had to be able to take off so we could get into his van. Um, and the reason we did this, he's got a communication device that's operating through the dome of his head, and when he goes out in the sun, um, the glare on the screen means he couldn't see the screen, which meant he couldn't talk and communicate. Um, we had to do things like customise it around his neck brace and um, various attendant joystick controls and stuff like that. Um, we also do a few other bits and pieces. We actually ended up mounting some rear vision mirror um, on his wheelchair because he wanted to be able to see behind him because he couldn't turn his head. Um, we also hacked into his communication device, um, installed an iTunes account so he could download <laughs> his own music, um, hooked up a webcam that he can control through a dot in his head um, and a few other bits and pieces for him. Um, no, this is the, the webcam, so that's it's now in front of his uh, wheelchair, and he can use that to make his own videos and record things as he wants, all through the dot on his head, which is pretty cool. Um, we do a lot of photography, kind of camera stuff, ranging from still photography through to video photography, or video making, um, and typically range from sort of how do people either mount it onto the wheelchair or hold it, or how do they control the various functions in there. Again, big range of scope. Um, we're doing a video camera mounting system at the moment um, to mount that onto a guy's wheelchair uh, and then modify it with remote controls and stuff um, so he can operate from the tray of his wheelchair. Uh, this is another one we did uh, for a guy with muscular dystrophy. He didn't have the ability to actually control the zoom and lens. Um, so there's a couple of little motors around each of those uh, which are controlled by some knobs on the tray of his wheelchair. And using that, he can actually do all his pan, tilt, zoom, um, that sort of stuff himself without needing someone else to set up the shot. He actually runs a small business taking photos and um, quite a good talented photographer um, and he uses that system with little uh, knobs to control that. Um, this one I think we've got on display here um, which basically you can control your camera through your iPad um, so there's a couple of mounting systems on there to attach it and then you can actually see on your screen um, and then just basically touch all the buttons to control it um, which we've got on display if you want to come have a look after. Um, this is another simple camera system this guy has a quad, some limited hand function. Um, he was just struggling with problems with the camera, so we designed up this silver bracket that goes around his camera. Uh, a couple of rings on the side to put his thumb in, which allows him to basically take the weight of the camera. And we modified the trigger, so rather than being the little push button on the top, uh, it's a mushroom sort of style head there that you can actually hold the other side of the camera with the wrist and then twist to take the photo. Um, so that was a custom solution for him. 
um, little tweaking to get it right, you know, all the holes on the sides. So we'd actually sit there and fine tune it to until it wet, worked well for him and it was well balanced and all that sort of stuff. We also do a lot of switch adaptation, um, making things controllable. Um, some examples of that. This is a little ball launcher that we modified uh, for a guy who wanted to be able to play ball with his little puppy. Um, so we got a little tennis ball launcher, which we found on eBay for fifty dollars. We mounted between his legs on his trade his, his foot plate, um, broke into the back of it, wired a switch up into his handlebars, and he can now hit that ball and it'll shoot out from underneath his wheelchair. Um, and then he's had to train his dog to return the ball and drop it back into the suit. <laughs> but he can sit there and play and play. Um, we're actually doing another one of those now for a guy, uh, but he's got a chihuahua, so we're having to use ping pong balls. <laughs> the tennis ball's a bit bigger than the dog. Um, so that's one type of basic off-the-shelf piece of equipment where we modify the switch so someone can operate it. Um, we also do some more advanced type stuff. Um, this is one that's on display over here. This is a mouth painting art easel. Um, so rather than people relying on carers to put paint on paintbrushes, put the paintbrushes in their mouth and move the canvas around, um, with one single switch interface, there's a scanning system on the side, so they can actually move the whole canvas left, right, up, down, forward, back. When they want fresh paint, hit the button and the tool arm comes from the side in front of their mouth, they can get the paint themselves, get it out of the way and keep painting. Um, so we've done a couple of those, one of those on display here as well. Um, and we're actually taking this whole single switch and scanning face and applying to a few other pieces of equipment. One that we're working on right now uh, is 10-pin bowling. Um, we actually met a guy who's bed bound um, and was being taken bowling with his sort of program, respite program. And he basically had to lay there and watch while the carer did the bowling for him. Uh, we're into lots of fun stuff. 10-pin bowling isn't the most exciting thing, but can you imagine sitting there watching someone else bowl for you? Yeah. We're like, no way, we've got to do something better than this. We've actually designed up this ramp system now, and with that same press button, he can actually pivot this uh, ramp left and right in the lane. He can actually move the whole thing left and right, um, and he can release the ball himself. So the only thing he needs is a carrot to basically take the ball off the ball return, put it on the top, and then he's in control from there. And that's all done with one press of a button. Um, we do lots of gaming controls. I saw Dale in here who we did an uh, Xbox controller for a little while ago. Um, but this is one, uh, play, uh, a Logitech PC gaming system, uh, which plugs into various different games. We're actually modifying that with hand controls, similar to modifying a car with hand controls, that like we're doing on the gaming system, so people can race their cars um, via the, the hand controls on the steering wheel. And we're doing a project now for a guy with, actually with muscular dystrophy. Um, he can actually operate all the buttons, except for two of them, which are underneath the joystick. So, You've got your analog joysticks for moving around, but there's also a button where you press it down at the top. It just doesn't have that function. Um, so we're breaking into the back of that, and we're putting one switch behind his head, and the other one underneath his big toe. Um, so now he can stab people with his big toe, and he can run with his head, <laughs> which is pretty cool. So now he can use all the functions of the thing. Um, I guess not too many people encourage people to stab people, but yeah, that's what we do. <laughs> uh, and this is Dale with his Xbox controller. Uh, so we basically broke into the Xbox controller and modified all the switches um, and they're all on the Velcro tab so you can rearrange them and get them to use all the different functions. And as you can see we've got lots and lots of bikes and we've got about 20 or 30 bikes in our workshop as a bit of a bicycle <coughs> library kind of trial system that we've got going on at the moment ranging from tandems and trikes and hand cycles and uh, wheelchair bikes and lots of add-ons and modifications as well. Um, so there's some examples, there's the hands, oh, this is a foot cycle, um, but with the three wheels for balance, um, different hand cycles. Um, this dragonfly, which is over here, actually attaches onto a standard wheelchair, um, so you can then use a bit of, get a bit of exercise with your arms rather than traditional wheel pushing. Um, this one over here is a wheelchair, which the bike actually clips onto the back. Um, so if you're going out, you can then take that, and then if you're going inside a shop work, you can just take the back bit off um, if you're a parent going on a holiday, that sort of stuff. Um, so there's a few there to have a look at after the display. Um, we do lots of kind of recreational vehicles as well, which are probably a bit better known for. Um, land, water, we do sky stuff. We've got a guy coming in that's going skydiving for assessment at 5 o'clock today. Um, motorised, non-motorised, motorbikes, off-road, boats, you know, if someone wants to do it, we'll be able to help out. So some examples of that. Uh, we're doing a mo yacht modification now. Uh, we're modifying the seating system for someone that needs some slightly higher supports. 
and modifying the joystick controls um, so they can actually um, press two large buttons to actually steer the boat and it's also a universal system so they can actually plug in a joystick so they can control the boat with the joystick or we can put the switches behind the head, control the head controls um, depending on who's going out um, so that's with sailability. Um, we're doing a buggy conversion at the moment and um, converting an off-road buggy into joystick controls uh, so we've taken a video gaming controller setup and we're actually linking that into all the steering, accelerator, braking. Um, so you'll be able to operate that with a computer joystick, um, which is pretty cool. Um, both, this has got a, a hoist system on the back of the boat, which swings out to the jetty. We can use a sling to lift someone up from the jetty into the boat uh, and away you go. Um, the hoist comes with you so you can go anywhere. You don't have to be fixed to one particular jetty with a hoist. You can go pull up to the shore on the beach, have a picnic, come back and that sort of stuff. We've also got some six skis and bits and pieces we can use to go out behind the back of the boat as well. Um, another motorbike project we did uh, has got a wheel motorbike with a wheelchair accessible sidecar. So the back door of the sidecar folds down the ramp, wheel in, all the tracking in the floor to secure the wheelchair down, and then you can go for a bit of a ride, um, which is pretty cool. Um, and then we do lots of different kind of wheelchair conversions and customization and finding bits and pieces. Um, so beach wheelchairs, you've probably all seen those around. Uh, there's a few of those that we can offer people. Um, we've actually just ordered uh, a couple of these Rough Rider, which are off-road wheelchairs, um, which have got the big fat tyres on the back and big wide casters that make them able to go over gravel tracks and um, easier through sand and uh, grass and that sort of stuff. We're actually going to be modifying a couple of those for our abseiling program. We'll take them wheelchairs abseiling as well. And so they're just a sample chair, uh, off-road wheelchairs. And this one you saw, you might have seen in the corner over here. Uh, this is a Segway that we've converted into basically a, a seated Segway. It balances on two wheels um, and you can get around and have a bit of fun on that. And um, that was a custom project for a young guy who's very excited to get that. But basically the seat on this thing lowers down um, to a sitting height. He can then do a, a demo while we're here. He can lower the seat down do a transfer from his wheelchair over, so this particular guy doesn't have the ability to lift his own weight, so he can lower the seat down, transfer on, and then lift the seat back up to his riding height, and then if we turn the Segway on, and then there's little stabilizers underneath the Segway, because normally with only two wheels, it's a bit of a challenge to balance and transfer on. Um, but with the stabilizers down, nice and stable, you can get on it. And then when he wants to go, pulls the legs up by pressing the button. And then by leaning forward and backwards, he's free to go. And the steering's all done through there. So effectively, it's a two-wheeled wheelchair. There's also an off-road version of this as well, um, which we are modifying one right now, which is up on the screen there. So that's a the off-road version of the wheelchair. Um, that can actually go through um, beach sand, bush trails, and all that sort of stuff as well. Uh, this is again another custom solution for an individual. He doesn't need the seat height adjustment, that sort of stuff. Um, he can just basically throw himself from his wheelchair onto that. This particular guy has actually used it to mow his own lawn. Um, so by sitting on the Segway, he can lean on the handlebars of the lawnmower and he can push his own uh, lawnmower. Um, this guy, he's only had, he had it out for a couple of days on a trial. He's already been able to go up a 15 centimetre curb um, on his own, which he wouldn't be able to do in a normal manual wheelchair. Um, and we do lots and lots of other stuff. It's not, we offer a service, not a set range of uh, equipment. Um, those projects range from very simple kind of stuff um, through to incredibly complex kind of technological projects um, through, from off the shelf solutions right through custom deal from scratch kind of projects. Um, some example, we did a, some little um, hand brackets to, for a lady to be able to use some daily living appliances. Um, you attach some of those to a hairbrush to brush the hair, and that was a lady out in Geraldton who didn't have any of that stuff. As well as some kind of clamp systems, and um, she just had a baby, um, and she wasn't able to peel the tabs off the nappies to change her own baby's nappy. Um, so we did a couple of these little bracket things that he could, she could use two hands, clip on it, pull it off, and it enabled her to change her own baby's nappy, which was an incredibly simple project. I think Matt told me after he met this lady and within about half an hour we had half a dozen of these made up and he was able to get them out to her and 
um, do all sorts of really simple stuff uh, that we all take for granted. Um, this is another project for a lady, she had muscular dystrophy, um, but she liked to get from her wheelchair onto the ground to do yoga. She had a pet bunny rabbit, so she liked to be on the, the ground to play with her, with her bunny. Um, it really struggled getting back up uh, from the ground back into a wheelchair. Um, so this system, uh, it's got a little remote control, it lowers the platform down. She can do a bum slide onto the platform, press the button, it lifts her up to wheelchair height, and then she can transfer over there. Um, we've had a few people interested in that just from people having one in their house in case they have falls out of their wheelchair to be able to get themselves back in without needing support. Um, this is a project we did a little while ago which was a seated surfboard, um, which is basically a seat frame that attaches onto the surfboard and then by leaning side to side you can get out and surf. Um, it's the only way I can surf, I can't surf standing up. <laughs> so universal design, great for everyone. Um, he's a quad, able to get out and surf on his own. Um, so that's just a, a little snapshot of some of the projects that we're able to offer. Again, it's more of, we don't have a set range of products. People tell us what they want to do and then we have a team of researchers and engineers. Um, Matt's our sort of point of contact as our resident OT now. Um, and first point of call, people tell us what they want to do. We'll go out and sort of do our research and scale the world and find out if there's an already existing solution. Quite often there is. Um, if there is, then we can help liaise with that supplier or the manufacturer, help bring it into Australia. Quite often you have to go through customs and logistics and engineering to get products approved. Um, if that product isn't quite right, then our team can modify it, add brackets, do this, that, link it into a wheelchair battery or whatever else. Or if we can't find anything that already exists, then our team will look at doing the custom design and build, depending on what the person wants. So um, that's DreamFit and some of the stuff that we do. Um, we're actually based next block over, so very close from here. Um, and we're always looking for new, we're not looking for too many new projects at the moment. <laughs> we've got just over 200 projects that we're trying to get through before the end of the year. Um, but we'll be looking for new projects next year, of which I think was 80 in the queue already. So by no means quiet, but we're always out there to answer questions and help out. So um, if anyone's interested in any of this stuff, or anything else, come speak to myself or Matt in the middle over here in the DreamFit shirt. Yep. Thank you guys.